Uh, Christian up here in Saipi, but the uh, BID Vehicle Association Display of SIP uh, here in Detroit. I'm in the Luminant booth with Anthony. And uh, Anthony, we are going to talk about your head of display solutions oh, demo. Oh, oh, oh. So take us through it. That sounds great. All right, so we're showing the uh, microphone. All right. All right, so uh, we're showcasing two different HUD solutions. Uh, we have a holographic optical element that we're recording uh, in two different use case scenarios. In this scenario, we have an AR head-up display using a laser projector. This is the top one here that you can see is uh, kind of pointing this, uh, this ADAS data, ADAS data out here. Uh, by the way, this is a little, um, I'll call it out of focus and a little speckly, just FYI. All right. Now, the speckle is coming from the projector the because laser, it is a laser projector. Right. That's right. So what we need to do to make a holographic optical display is record matching wavelengths from the projector that gets played back to the user. So we're using a uh, holographic recording setup using lens configuration that dictates what the eye box and the field of view is going to be. Uh, that is essentially creating uh, this display that overlaps in reality by having the projector display onto a diffuser to create a real image. The diffuser is going to reflect off the hologram, and then that's going to cover the top display. On the so wait, wait, wait. So yeah. there's a I, I get I get the diffuser for the bottom one. There's a diffuser here as well. Under dash. One? Under the dash. So you have a laser projector yeah. that's imaging. Oh, creates an image on the, on the diffuser. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Now okay. that relationship between kind of like, the, a, like a like the way DLP does it, they have an, an intermediate screen. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So our diffusers at Luminate are quite commonly found under dash in multiple TFT, DLP, multiple types okay. of displays. And that's um, also for like sunlight radiation too. So you know, gets the radiance back onto the display. It can be helpful there, but in this case, you're creating a real image, yep. so you can essentially play back, and then you're also increasing the distribution that you're filling on the display, right? So yes. the, the diffuser is going to help increase the beam divergence that gets reflected back. Gotcha. Now, part of the key aspect here is going to be the relationship between the diffuser and the projector in relationship to the HOE, which is in the windshield, uh, to create that virtual distance. Right. So with the HOE, we're controlling the eye box, the field of view, and the virtual distance and that combination. Now, one of the issues, I, uh, I believe, that we're going to put a diffractive element here in the windshield, you can get rainbows and sunlight to glare, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's right. All right. So uh, it's pretty commonly known that a hologram, which is a diffractive optic, is going to play back uh, a diffractive image, which looks like a rainbow. That right. would be what we call solar flare. Solar flare is when light opposite that's coming from the sun, opposite of the projector, in Bragg that comes to your eye. Right, so that solar flare is going to be a rainbow that distracts the driver um, due to a diffractive material that could be in the windshield. So uh, the solution that we have for this, we have a patent that essentially takes the stray light, uh, which is a collimated light source from the sun, and then light guides that through the edge of the material. So you have the light that comes off of the hologram to the eye box, opposite of that from Bragg, is going to have wavelengths that gets light guided to the edge of the substrate. Now, we built a proof of concept for this that was delivered to an OEM uh, where we did record kind of a sanity check to make sure that the sunlight from the collimated geometry would actually prevent the rainbow from reaching the driver. So we were successful in that geometry, okay. but it is going to be a large effort to mitigate solar flare when you start introducing multiple light sources. So as a physics standpoint, it is not impossible to mitigate, but it is also not extremely easy. Okay, right? so, so what's, what's the status of that demo now? That was just, 
to a private demo to a customer. That's right. That's right. And yeah. you plan to do something public? Yeah. So we're planning on maturing the technology on the AR portion uh, to be on the road, hopefully by 2030, 2028. So okay. there's multiple milestones that we're working towards. Okay. Uh, currently, we're in the middle of doing lamination trials for a large demo where this is going to be laminated in the windshield. Great. So what you're looking at here now is something that's stitched together and then glued to glass. Yep. Uh, for this to be implemented in production, it needs to be laminated between PVD. Gotcha. Um, and phase two of this is going to be having multiple holographic recordings on a single substrate that's in the windshield. So you have from pillar to pillar, one large photopolymer, which is what we record the hologram onto, yep. with multiple exposure areas yep. that have different optical power playbacks depending on the projector and images that you're trying to create. So you could have um, a configuration like this, which has an AR HUD at one part of the windshield and a uh, in-plane HUD, this, uh, a, a, just a plane diffuser, and other it, in, this, in the driver position as well as uh, passenger positions, correct? That's right. So they can be spatially separated right. with different optical functions uh, with different projector locations. Okay. All right. Now, one thing that we are considering, because the AR needs to be a laser light source, is trying to do a cost savings as far as illuminating multiple projectors from a single source. Okay. So one of the talks that our CEO gave earlier today was to use switchable brag ratings, where you can take a channel from a specific wavelength. You need all three to create white, and then have those using current to switch from one channel to another. So you can have three projectors. So projector one, one source, yeah. yeah, projector one, two, and three being switched uh, efficiently from one source that'll help reduce cost and volume to have multiple projectors that would accomplish the large display. I, I did see that presentation and that concept is actually kind of similar to what they use have, have used in the laser cinemas. They have a, a laser light closet to distribute laser light out to multiple projectors. Now that is exactly the point. And the way that we create the spatially uh, or the switchable brag grading is going to be very similar on how we record a hologram. Okay. Right? So the holographic techniques are going to be almost identical. It's just a slightly different material system, but that is early early stage, yeah. right? So okay. right now we have products that go under dash now, the light shaping user. The next step is going to be uh, having optical power in the windshield with the holographic technology. Right. And, and, and then the sun mitigation technology. And then the sun mitigation that goes into the AR portion. Right. And then it's going to be addressing the multiple projector locations. Okay. Right. Now so, we haven't we haven't talked about the, the lower display much because that's that's a, a diffuser. So you do a, a basically an analog a fabrication process and mastering process as opposed to a digital mastering process. So tell us about that. All right. So uh, the key difference between the two different displays is one has the real image on the glass and the other has a virtual distance with a defined eye box and field of view. Uh, for the bottom portion that's in plane, essentially you're imaging onto a transparent diffuser. Right. Now Luminate manufactures light shaping diffusers currently that have a holographic pseudo-random microstructure that dictates what the beam distribution is going to be. So what we do in this case is we use our holographic technology on the diffuser portion and record a diffractive version. So when we're playing back, we get to tune what that eye box or field of view can be to the user based off of the diffuser prescription that we record into the hologram. So uh, these, are, these features are tens of nanometers? Uh, the, all right. So the microstructure that we use for, let's call it uh, the conventional optic, which is the diffuser, yes. uh, have features that are 30 to 50 microns in size. Oh, okay. That makes, right. Okay, gotcha. And then we take that as an object and record a diffractive version, which is going to be a one or two nanometer uh, Frag grading, essentially. Okay. Okay. 
All right, so in this case, you do have to do a, a setup to record, which is going to make uh, tooling to essentially record a holographic display. Uh, and then once you have that master, you do a copy process to do mass production roll to roll. Gotcha. So really, the difference is only in the mastering technique. The mastering technique that we're using is in an exposure development uh, using optics that we can create in-house. So the in-house diffusers that we have, we have the ability to tune the optical prescription that goes through the production value chain, which would be used in tooling in this case. Okay, okay. Now, some pros and cons between the two is uh, with an analog, which this would be considered, yes. is you do have to tool up and create the optical path that you record. Uh, and tooling for that could be large mirrors that takes weeks to procure that are fairly high cost if you're looking at the total program as a whole. Right. Um, in our case, this is vertically integrated because we are making uh, the key component in the recording, which is the diffuser in-house. Right. And, and Zeiss Micro Optics is also in the analog camp. That's in right. Of what they the holograms that they make. Yeah, and holograms have been in existence for twenty plus years. So, sure. as far as mastering is concerned, luckily we've been holographically recording for twenty years with the light shaping diffuser as our core legacy product. Okay. Uh, having that R and D team work on the next technology, which is a transparent display, just made perfect sense. Indeed. All right. I think that's a that's a wrap. Thank All you right. very much. Appreciate it. Thank you it. for having me.